In this video, I will be showing three Python scripts from Maya that are designed to be used together as a way to use Maya as a simple level editor. My background for creating these scripts is that I wanted to learn more about Python scripting for Maya, and I saw an opportunity to possibly create something useful for my students here at the Game Assembly. Our students work with 3D game projects during their second year, and they pretty much create their own tech. That is, no fancy prefabricated game engines and tools. So for their first projects, they basically have to create game content and levels with no custom tailored tools, at least not initially. They develop their own tools later on. I've pretty much seen students create levels in, in XML uh, in a simple text editor by copying and pasting elements around, which is not the most intuitive and fun way to design a level. So this is where I figured I might be able to help them get started with using Maya as a level editor as uh, Maya has many parts you'd want in a game editor. You have a camera you can easily manipulate, you can move and copy around objects all over the scene, and you can edit parameters and such. So um, I decided to create this as a three-part process um, by using these scripts I'm about to show you. The first part is uh, a time-saving script for importing your level objects into the Maya scene. The second part is editing common and unique attributes for these uh, level objects. And the last part is about exporting the level data from the Maya scene to an external text file. And these scripts are designed specifically for this purpose, and they might not be all that applicable for other users. And all the game content inside this video is created by my students here at the school. So let's get started. Let's start with importing our level objects. And I have a shelf button here for importing my objects and this is the main interface for the import part you specify your project directory so let's go ahead and do that sorry my uh, dialog was off screen uh, i've created a, a dummy directory here called my game directory i'm just um, going to go ahead and show that to you um, there we go inside my game directory i've got well now there are actually empty folders but let's say this was my game directory for my game project and uh, below these folders nestled inside i'll have inside my contents i'll have models and below models uh, i'm going to be storing all of my um, model files which will be used in the game project um, the students here they use the collada as their main format for um, using models in the games so, for my example, I will be using all models stored below the level objects folder. Inside this is uh, several other subfolders for different objects. So, back to Maya. Um, I'm browsing for my project directory. And my project directory would be the folder called my game directory. Then, I'll have to specify the models directory. And that would be inside my game directory, content, and models. And the dialog here will show you the relative uh, root path which will be used. And this will, will be um, good to know to make sure you get this right. It's basically the difference between this string and this string. And this will be the kind of string that each model will have for its absolute path to, um, to where the model is located. Well, actually, a relative path, but... Um, so, next part is uh, specifying if you want any extra attributes. The script, uh, per default, will um, add an attribute for each object which is imported, uh, where it will contain the string for where the model file is. But beyond that, you could add um, several other attributes that might be interesting, such as, uh, let's say we want an attribute called type. We want to specify what type of uh, object this is. We want a health attribute. And maybe we want uh, a collision suffix attribute. This would be for uh, uh, helping the game engine finding the collision models for, for this specific object. And also, um, in this game project, the way the students designed uh, the, the content, they will have, if you check inside the Asteroid01 folder, for instance, you will have an Asteroid01.dae, which is the Collada file. And then there's also one called uh, similar, but there's also a C-O-L-L, -L, as in collision, in front of it. And this is basically the collision model which will be used for the asteroid file. So when I'm importing my objects, I want to filter out these collision files. 
And since this one um, is called C-O-L-L uh, underscore, which is um, their naming standard for collision objects, I can tell the importer to ignore files which contains um, this string in their name and therefore I won't have the importer uh, import all of the collision spheres in this case. So let's go ahead and import all the models within my models directory here. Or oh, sorry, not models, I'm about to make a mistake here. I want specifically models and level objects actually. So there we go. And let's hit import. And right now, um, Maya is using the the default bundled um, FBX DAE importer, which is going to be showing this dialog with warnings and errors about specific materials, etc., not not working out properly. And it's basically nothing to worry about in my case. So here we go. Here are my uh, important models, and um, I'm going to go ahead and just move them around a bit and duplicate them. So let's let's say I'm I'm about to create a, a level right now. So I'll want to position my objects where I want them placed in the world. Um, let's see, we have three kind of asteroids and a few space houses, if you wish. So let's just go ahead and take a few of these and duplicate a few copies. Let's say I want some asteroids all over the place, so something like that, perhaps. And maybe another water tower over here. So uh, let's say I'm happy with the placement. This is going to be my new level for the game. Um, the next part would be to specify uh, the extra parameters or, or the attributes for these objects, if you will. And that's the second part of this um, this series of scripts, which is this one, Edit Object Parameters. If I click this one, uh, I'll get this window. And the way this works is all of these files have a name. And this will be their class name, if you wish, their archetype name. So I'll have objects by this name Asteroid 1, Asteroid 2, etc. And you have them here, Asteroid 1, Asteroid 2, Asteroid 3, Container House, Player House, etc. And for all of these, I can specify um, attributes such as type, health, etc. And all of these objects will, besides their archetype name, they will have a unique identifier such as Asteroid 1002, Asteroid 1003, etc. So even if I were to grab one of these asteroids here, which is of the type Asteroid 1, and duplicate it around, it will still have this namespacing, which is derived from the file name. Um, so, all of these are global attributes. Let's go ahead and um, edit a few of these parameters. So, let's say we call this type of object a uh, destructible object, right? Um, and all of my asteroids are going to be destructible. Um, and this would actually be a destructible object, this one and this one. Besides uh, these, I'll want to specify these house objects as being static objects. So let's go ahead and write static over whoops over here, and also for the water tower model. Now um, I'll want to type in some health values for this as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in some different values here to show you how this works. And the static objects, since they won't be destructible, I won't need any um, health parameters for these in my case. So um, this one will have a health parameter, and this one will have a health parameter. Um, it's worth mentioning, if you check out the container house and player house, you can see that they have a, a lot more attributes than the other objects. And that is because, for instance, this um, container house over here, this is from one single collada file but it contains two objects inside the collada file. The asteroids above, they are one object in one collada file, but this one is two objects in one collada file. And the way this is handled by the script is that besides the container house um, name space here, they also get the object name from the file. So um, sadly in this case, this specific model from the students game projects, they didn't bother naming them properly. So this mo one model here is called Polysurface 2, and this one is called Polysurface 1. Ideally, it would be 
um, named house inside the D collider file, and this one could be named asteroid. And in that case, I'd get container house 01 underscore asteroid underscore 001, etc. And these names would also show up properly here. So you'd have to imagine this one saying, let's say, house type, house health, house collision suffix, and then asteroid type, asteroid health, etc. So with uh, just some proper naming, you would get proper names here as well. But uh, let's also add collision suffix. And um, the reason I added this was imagine that you want in your level file, you want to tell the game engine uh, the name of the game model. So the game model would be a variation of the model name with the addition of the C-O-L-L underscore in front of. So let's just add these. There we go. Uh, yep. And also, um, beyond these global values for the objects, you can actually edit unique values for specific objects in your scene if you want to. So let's say that this one asteroid in my game level, um, it's a specific asteroid and it needs a lot more health than um, its other brethren, which are of the type asteroid 01. So asteroid 01 has 300 health. Let's go ahead and say that this one needs 500 health. And if I open my attribute editor in Maya, you'll see that the transform node for this uh, object also contains these extra attributes. So there's also one called type health and collision suffix. And these are left blank by default. If they are blank, the export script will go ahead and collect these global values and use those. But if you do go ahead and enter something here, this will override the, the global value here, which is uh, 300. So there we go. Now then, um, let's say that I'm happy with my level and I want to go ahead and export it. I'd select all the objects which I want to export. And then I'd go ahead and click this one, Export Selected Objects. Um, I'm prompted for where I want to save my file. And I'll go ahead and overwrite this uh, mylevel.txt file, which I have on my desktop. Uh, yep. Let's go ahead and have a look at that file. Here we go. And um, this one contains all of my objects, as you can see. And the specific formatting in this one is just something I, 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 um, I, I designed just to show you as an example. You could um, grab a whole lot of other values as well, such as rotation and add other extra attributes if you, if you want to. But you could say, if you were to look at this object here, you'd see that the, its specific uh, name in Maya is called asteroid 01 underscore 001. You have its position values, what model file is it using, what collider file, what type of objects, and these three um, values here, or parameters, are the ones which we uh, entered earlier in the, in the parameter uh, dialog. Uh, so let's see, we should have one uh, asteroid 01 with 500 health, uh, that specific one we, we entered, that unique one which needed more health. Let's see if we can find that. Here we go. Asteroid 01. 002 has 500 health. We, this was uh, overridden by the unique entered value on the specific object, that is. So, uh, that's pretty much how it works. You have the import script, the edit parameter script, and the export script. And this is intended for, for the students to, to really save a lot of time in designing their uh, levels. Uh, also worth mentioning, which I almost forgot, is that um, Due to this whole process of um, specifying directories and all of this data here could be a bit tedious if, uh, for instance, you were working on your game project and you were constantly opening this dialog and you had to specify the same folders over and over again. So therefore, uh, you can actually um, call this command with a few predefined fields, if you will. I'll show how that works. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this line here and open the text editor or a script editor in Maya. If you have a look here, I'll just paste this, um, you can see that the way I call this uh, script is by typing the script name, level objects importer, dot the, the function, which is UI, and then it takes four optional um, fields which you can specify. And these fields correspond to the, the project directory, the model directory, 
the extra attributes you want to add and the, the string to filter out the uh, objects with the name. Um, and if I run this command instead, which is actually stored in this shelf button, you can see that I have um, predefined strings here in my fields, which could save me a whole lot of time. Maybe I just want to specify the models directory and the rest should be filled in already. But that's just a, a, another way to save a bit of time using this script.